Welcome back, everyone, to Aspire, the Leadership Development Podcast, where we will be discussing the visions, inspirations, and experiences from top educational leaders. My name is Joshua Stamper, and you can connect with me on Twitter or on Instagram at Joshua double underscore Stamper. Aspire listeners, I am so excited to have my next guest, who was a contributing author to my new book, Aspire to Lead. And I have the amazing, and I say amazing, Allison Apsey, who I got to meet in person at the Teach Better 19 conference. And we were just talking about that off the air. But man, what a fantastic conference to meet educators. And I was absolutely blown away by Allison. She is so genuine and she is the real deal. She's an amazing leader and administrator, author. She's just absolutely fantastic. So Allison, thank you so much for not only being on the podcast, but being a contributing author to my new book. I am so honored. I am honored to just learn alongside you and from you, Joshua. And I'm just so proud of you and excited for your new book. Well, I mean, I got to talk to you a little bit about books. You know, when we're at the conference, you have some amazing literature out there. So you've got Through the Lens of Serendipity and The Path to Serendipity. But you also have a journal and you have a children's book. You have like all serendipity in education pieces. So before we go any further, I want you just to talk about what you're all about in education, your role, and then of course your books. Awesome. Yeah. So I have the honor of being an elementary principal. This is my eighth year as the principal of Quincy Elementary in Zeeland, Michigan, which is in West Michigan near Grand Rapids. This is my 19th year, I think, as a principal. And I've been a principal of all levels. I actually taught grades three through eight. And I've been a high school principal, junior high principal, elementary principal, just like a different kind of weird trajectory of how I ended up where I am. Um, I had the honor of being a leadership coach for my district. And I am an educator wellness coach through an organization called Opportunity Thrive that is in West Michigan. So just really love that opportunity to walk alongside educators to help them be like the healthiest versions of themselves. And then I love to write and to travel across the country and meet educators and be able to connect and learn and grow together like you. And so I fell in love with the idea of serendipity way back in the year 2000 after I saw a movie called Serendipity starring John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. And for me, it became more of like a mindset of like, if we go through life, our lives looking for happy accidents and beautiful lessons in everything we experience we have the potential to live so much richer, more fulfilled, more effective, happier lives. And, and really like, you know, I'll be in the depths of a sorrow and I will not be ready to look for the serendipity in the situation. I will not be ready to look for the beautiful lesson or happy accident, but even that like glimmer of hope that lives within me, knowing that I'm going to become more because of everything I go through really, I think can help us all get through the tough times, and you know the 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 great times and everything in between. So I just feel um, so honored to to be on this journey alongside amazing educators like you, Allison. That's so kind of you, and I love your message. I love everything you stand for. And for those who are listening, if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to previous episodes, I've had Allison on the Aspire podcast several times, and she's just provided so much wisdom. We talked about restorative practices. We talked about leadership and how you know, for any aspiring leader, what you need to do to kind of help that leadership journey. And I've learned so much through all of your words and, um, and your books and your literature. So thank you so much for all that you do. And I'm super excited about this episode because we get to talk about your contribution, which is about creativity. And that's something that me and you haven't really talked about. But, you know, when I was looking for authors to put into the book for contributions, I really wanted to have folks that, helped in my own leadership journey. And and I definitely right away thought of you, Allison. And honestly, I could have asked you to write in any of the chapters because I know you <laughs> have so much um, experience in all these different things and you've helped so many leaders get to where they wanted to go and, and help them in their goals. So in regards to creativity, if you wouldn't mind, I don't want you to, of course, speak about the entire contribution, but if you wouldn't mind talking about creativity and how you use that within your own leadership journey. Yeah, no, I was felt so honored that you asked me to be a contributing author. And this topic is really so close to home because I think creativity, we don't recognize what an important part it plays in our overall wellness. Mm-hmm. 
And that we're our best versions of ourselves when we can get creative and get spontaneous and, and take risks and try new things. And, and really in the, the contribution, I just highlighted three different tips and to open the door to creativity in your leadership. And actually there's, there's a fourth tip, a a little bonus (laughs) at the end, but the concept of like, we can't do everything all at once. So as we gather these great ideas, whether you're an aspiring leader or an early career principal or leader, or if you are mid-career or like me, 19 years into this leadership journey, just gather up all those ideas and keep them in a list that you can pull out when you're like, I, I need something to get excited about a new project, or I need something to support my staff or support my students or families in different ways. So just develop that a file of ideas to consider. It could even just be like slips of yellow legal pad that you just throw into a file and that when you're feeling creative, you can just take it out and leaf through because I think it's really important. And that's tip number two, to really focus on one creative idea at a time so that (laughs) I'm one of those who like, I, I don't like sit and contemplate different ideas. Like I really just like jump in head first, sometimes have a well thought out plan sometimes just kind of want to try things out, but you can't give it your all if you're trying to do everything all at once. So just really tackling one idea at a time, and then also leaning on a team. And it could be a team within your school. Like you could have an innovation team in your school, whether you are a teacher leader or um, in a official leadership role, like a principalship, a group of people that you can just bounce ideas off. It's amazing how far, like you can have this like little bitty idea, then all of a sudden becomes this big kind of culture changing thing when you pull a a team in together and it's really empowering like as a principal if I lean into teachers and allow them to have a voice in the innovation that happens in our school it makes a huge difference and then just the um the fourth tip okay I'll I'll hold on to that because I I see that you want to say something (laughs) I can go on and on about creativity we're we're on uh video so Allison can tell (laughs) chomping at the bit I see your question (laughs) No, I was thinking like yeah. like you said, you've been in a, a, a principal for 19 years and I'm just wondering like when you felt comfortable to be that creative self, like how long did it take you to say, okay, I'm not going to just do what traditionally has been done or what I've experienced pr- prior to um, this role, but now I'm in this principal position and now I have the autonomy to be creative. Like when did you feel comfortable in that? Yeah, I, and I think that's a great question because it does take a little bit of time. I love um, George Kuros gives advice of like, when you get into a new leadership role, don't make one single change until you know a strength of every single staff member. And I think that's just such valuable advice because you don't want to go in and fix things that aren't broken or take the school in a direction that they actually just came from. Um, You really need to understand how, why things are the way they are. And a little bit of the journey that um, led to, you know, just, the school being where it is. So I think that's key first before you get creative and innovative. Another key is really leaning into a team of people Mm -hmm. and not thinking that you need to do it all alone because you're going to, if you think that you're just going to go into a leadership position and just kind of blow things up and make all of these changes and be a lone ranger, um, you really are going to be a lone ranger because people aren't going to understand the the method behind the bandits and aren't going to get on board. People Beth um, Huff and Shelley Burgess wrote Lead Like a Pirate. And one of the things that stuck with me from their book is that people don't break that, try to break down things that they helped create. That's key leaning into the team. And then the other thing is getting connected. Yeah. I became way more confident when I became connected to amazing educators across my state and across the country. So that even if I didn't connect real closely with the educators I worked directly with, in some ways, I know there's a slew of educators out there who can help me get creative and innovative and help me feel confident in exploring new ideas. Mm-hmm. Well, I also like the fact that you were talking about having a legal pad or sticky notes or whatever you need to do, right, to have these creative ideas and just kind of put them aside for when you need it. Because I don't know about you, but I tend to get so busy in just the monotonous of the job that I sometimes forget to have these little passion projects that give me life in the position. 
and are something that I want to pursue. However, sometimes I just forget about it. And so when did you realize that you needed to like have documentation somewhere to kind of help remind you of these creative ideas? I think just like what you said, we get caught up in the monotony. And if, if I look at my school day and there's not a piece of it that I'm excited about or I'm having fun doing, then I need to figure out how can I stick something in there that where I get creative and I get to have fun. And, you know, it could be as simple as going outside to recess with kids or wearing my fanny pack with speakers out in the morning. Like, for instance, I started doing weekly video announcements and I had no clue how to make videos. And I, they are so ridiculous and sloppy when I first started. And it's just been a, a journey over many, many years. And I'm not saying they're professional by any means right now, but I have a lot more skills now in creating videos that I used to, they're way less clunky. Um, I'm much more efficient with creating them. I know what is exciting for our students in creating them. And I just jumped in with both feet. Like I didn't wait until I took a video creating class or that I knew how to do things perfectly. And I think sometimes as leaders, um, we want to have all those ducks in a row. And sometimes it's good just to, just to jump in and experiment. This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. You can find out more at teachbetter.com slash podcast. Now let's get back to the episode. I don't want to provide too much, especially your bonus piece on creativity, because I want folks to get the book and read your amazing contribution. It is packed full of ideas for creativity, and um, I just... I'm so honored that you are part of this book. Before we end, I want to talk about any projects that you've got going on. I know you've probably got plenty going on in your life, but I know you always have something up your sleeve. So is there something that you're working on right now? There is. Yeah, it's my first non-serendipity book. Oh, wow. Which is so, I know, it's huge. So it's, um yeah, book number five. And it's, the working title right now is called Leading the Whole Teacher. And it takes, you know, some of the components of the whole child movement and then layers that over how can we create an environment that helps teachers be fulfilled in in all the ways. So there's healthy relationships, there's a healthy workload, they're appropriately challenged to um, grow and to, to take risks and where they feel valued. And if we can create schools where um, all of those things take place for teachers, like what incredible environments they would be. When I write, I learn and reflect. And it's so, it's like ultimate accountability, right? To put it in a book that you write, like you better live this out day and night, Allison. So um, it's just been a a very fun journey. And I, I write the books, like I'd like to read, which are conversational and full of stories and just pulling in as much inspiration as possible. And I haven't got uh, my hands on Aspire to Lead yet. And I am so excited to read the whole book. It is so, so beautiful. It is just like, it is, I already can see without even opening the book, like looking at the cover, I can just see it is you, Joshua Stamper in a book and you are an incredible educator, incredible person. And I just, I feel incredibly blessed to be connected to you. Oh, same goes to you. And that, that's very kind. I am proud of the cover because I actually created the cover. So um, I- Of course so, you did. <laughs> I, I'm so thankful that uh, Sarah Thomas allowed me to have that piece in that. So um, yes, I'm proud of the book, but I'm also proud of the outside of the book with, with the cover too. So Allison, I'm hoping that all of our listeners are connected with you on social media, but if by chance they're not and they want to connect, how would they do that? I'm, I keep it simple. I'm at Allison Apsey everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, maybe even find me on TikTok um, it, or Facebook or AllisonApsey.com is my website. And you can email me at AllisonApsey at gmail.com. TikTok, huh? I'm going to have to find you. <laughs> I'm not saying it's good. <laughs> it's very cringy, according to my teenagers. Whatever. You said you had mad video skills. So now I got to <laughs> No, I did not. I did not say that. <laughs> That's that's what I heard, listeners. So find her on TikTok and and see all those amazing skills that she's got. But no, 
definitely check out Allison. She's, like I said, I, I can't speak enough about who she is, not only as an educator, as a person. So definitely check her out on all of her social media outlets and then also her books, specifically through the lens of serendipity and the path to serendipity. So Allison, thank you again for, like I said before, not only being on the Aspire podcast, but being a contributing author to Aspire to Lead. Thank you. 